Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, very warm uh, welcome to you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, we've been, I think, thrilled by the, both the turnout and the media interest there hasn't been in this issue uh, today, and I think that's because it is a significant issue and lots of people have lots of views about it. It is a pleasure to invite uh, and welcome uh, the Minister of Finance, the Honourable Bill English, and thank you, uh, Minister, for your time and a very busy election year. The Deputy Mayor of Auckland, Penny Hulse, welcome Penny. John Ray, the Chairman of NZCID. Arthur Grimes, an economist. Uh, fellow Mayors, MP Andrew Williams, if there's any other MPs here, I apologise. I know it's important this year that you're recognised. But um, <laughs> if there are others, um, welcome. To other um, members of the public, um, thank you for coming. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to LGNZ's first significant major issue seminar this year on the topic that is important to us all, housing affordability, everybody's challenge. I'd like to thank our legal partner Simpson Grierson for um, helping us run this evening's uh, function for the use of their building, uh, well the floor of their building, I'm not sure whose building it is, but the use of this space anyway, um, and the spectacular venue. Before introducing our first guest speaker, the Honourable Bill English, I want to make a few introductory remarks on the issue of affordable housing across New Zealand uh, and what I see as some of the big issues in their space. Homes in New Zealand are the second most expensive in the developed world based on the price to income ratio and are the most overvalued relative to rents. The 2012 Productivity Commission report on housing affordability told us that the cost of building materials is overheated and they make a significant contribution to costs. Some of the tools being given to deal with the problems are very blunt. For example, the changes to LVR, they can create problems to parts of New Zealand where affordability actually isn't an issue. We agree with the concern that the inflated house prices in Auckland has a macroeconomic effect and this has an effect across the country. And that is the first thing that Minister English told us when he first engaged us in this space, was really around the context of what this issue meant for New all New Zealanders in terms of interest rates uh, and other such things. But affordable housing is not an issue for most of or many people in New Zealand. It is actually a big issue in Auckland. It is a big issue in Christchurch. But for a number of other parts of New Zealand, it isn't much of an issue. Sure, they want a cheaper house. Sure, they are struggling. But actually, the red-hot overheated parts of it are actually in Auckland and because of the earthquake in Christchurch. So in our view, we need a strategic approach. Local government, central government and the private sector need to work together to address housing affordability. We think it's time to think strategically about this matter, reconsider sharing some of the risks, unravel some of the complexities of planning under the RMA and work on strengthening regional economies to make other parts of New Zealand attractive places to live. Let's be partners with central government and industry in working towards this. In terms of local government's roles, there are many factors influencing housing affordability in our made centres, including financial instrument, instruments, banking policy, the cost of construction, our seemingly insatiable desire for large houses, supply of land and housing, and consenting costs. Let's be very clear about the respective roles of central and local government. Local government's roles is through zoning land for subdivision, setting densities for housing, consenting around timing and costs, and partnerships with the private sector to develop land, and also importantly the providers of key infrastructure to service that development. We also need to look at the progress that has actually been made. I think Minister probably two years ago was the first time we had sort of significant conversations about this. 
and significant conversation has been made. And despite some recent commentary around Auckland and Christchurch, where affordable housing is an issue, councils have made good inroads in zoning and consenting despite significant growth and challenges. Auckland Council, through its Special Housing Project Office, has a great statistics about the timelines of the consenting processing, and the council is also working alongside central government on Auckland Housing Accord, and there are now 63 special housing areas across Auckland. We need to give credit where credit's due. Equally, I saw some statistics yesterday of all the councils in New Zealand and their consenting times uh, in terms of RMA and building consents. And there has been a dramatic improvement in the last five years. Now, there was a little bit of a nudge from the government in that space, to be fair. And equally, um, there was a time when the recession on where there wasn't much activity. But most councils are now reaching the mandatory compliance with, of 98% with an, of, of their consents are getting through in that time frame, which is a substantial lift and good on local authorities for doing so. Local government's role in influencing housing affordability is limited and not always straightforward. There are four main areas we can influence as part of this. One is around the supply of land for housing. Local government works within the framework of legislation to provide land for residential development, zoning of land as in greenfields, and setting densities through the district plan. This process can be cumbersome especially around appeals to plan changes, and the new Housing Affordability and Special Housing Areas Act changes the balance of third party participation in, the, in this process. There may be a case that this is new law, which essentially streamlines the RMA and can influence the next steps of amendments to the RMA. In other words, something had to be done in an RMA sp space, and it has been. Most areas in New Zealand do not have a shortage of land for housing. A survey we commissioned at the beginning of 2013 illustrated that land supply is not a nationwide problem and residential land is readily available in many parts of New Zealand. Steps haven't been taken by a number of TAs to ensure sufficient residential land is available for the next 20 to 30 years. Where council and central government agree that special housing areas are needed, the key is to get agreement. Where there are in place, they appear to be working, and Penny will talk about this in her speech. Local authorities, however, do not influence when land zoned for redevelopment or development becomes available to the market. There's a hell of a lot of land banking goes on around New Zealand, and it's very difficult to get it brought to the market. In terms of costs of consenting, the cost of consenting to, contributes to the price of a house. We get that and we understand that is a core responsibility of ours. The process of reforming the building and construction industry continues quietly in the background and these reforms are many and varied. The overall aim is to deliver quality buildings for New Zealanders at the least cost possible. Many councils have introduced efficiencies and some have put in place online systems to speed up that consenting. The sector has also been working with the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment to develop a national online building consenting system, and we are keen to progress this. There is also a risk element that is played out in the market. The current law creates a culture of risk aversion around building consenting. It largely flowed out of the leaky home scenario, but it has meant that there is a risk aversion amongst local authorities in a way there wasn't before, because very often the local authority is the last person standing. Risk needs to be shared between local government, central government and the private companies more fairly as the, as the present joint and several liability regime disadvantages local authorities and our staff react accordingly. We'd like to see better incentives for developing housing and that includes a more appropriate allocation of risk and we await the findings of the Law Commission which is due at any time. And lastly, we can be partners in development of land. Auckland in particular has a number of initiatives underway to address the supply side of housing. <coughs> of housing. Partnering with the private sector, the Hobsonville Land Company and the redevelopment of Tamaki. So where to from here? 
LGNZ shares central government's desire to be see more affordable housing come to the market. However, housing affordability is a multifaceted issue and one that is everybody's challenge. The cost of housing has a macroeconomic impact on all of New Zealand, even if a shortage of land for residential development is limited to some metropolitan areas. Councils need to work closely with central government and the private sector to improve the affordability of housing in New Zealand because in order to create vibrant communities, people need access to homes within their budget. In most areas of New Zealand, there is no shortage of land zoned for housing, and most areas of New Zealand can actually accommodate some growth relatively easy. Many parts of New Zealand would actually like more growth. Local authorities, I reiterate, do not influence when land is often brought to the market. So while our largest cities are, will always have affordability challenges for many, we need to address the problem by strengthening regional economies to make other parts of New Zealand attractive places to work and live. So what do we want to see changed? We'd like to unravel some of the complexities around the RMA, such as the appeal rights on changes to RMA plans. This is well known to the government. We want to work together to progress online building consenting and we want to think carefully about how risk is shared between local government, central government and developers. And most importantly, let's share the economic growth across New Zealand to make our regions attractive places to live and take some of the pressure of Auckland and other metro cities.